hi, and welcome to Ask Us Anything on this October 2nd. Wow. October already, our favorite time of the year. I love fall. Crisp mornings, cool nights, beautiful trees changing color. Wish I was in the UP. Ah, I spent all day yesterday shopping and preparing food to go to the UP, and then we decided... Well, maybe, I maybe. That, a, did maybe I tell a, him because we're listing our house and buying another house and everything's crazy? And we're and going to be closing on 10 acres of property in Michigan in about a week or 10 days. We'll tell you all about it as soon as we get it. But that. So we have a lot of confusion. But we still might go, we decided. Um, so uh, we'll see how all that works out. Um, we're coming to you from uh, our Sticks and Bricks home in Michigan, and we're in a little different location closer to the router. We had some interference. Uh, it was pixelated imaging last week. So hopefully this is a little better quality. I just did a check before we went on and it looked good. Um, a couple of things to announce before we get to your questions. This is Ask Us Anything and we're simulcasting on all of our platforms, our social media platforms, uh, Facebook, uh, our Facebook page, our Facebook group, our Facebook supporters page, YouTube, um, Twitter, LinkedIn, um, we're live on all of those. So, uh, wherever you're coming to us, we're glad you're watching us and you can ask a question. It helps if you type question all in caps, because mm -hmm. as we're scanning, they all come in pretty quick. We'll know what's a question. And if you're making a comment, make that in caps, just comment. And then the rest can be regular and it'll stand out a little bit and we can know. Thanks to Phyllis Kerr in Iowa for, uh, Phyllis Carr is taking care of all of our Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and uh, Chris uh, Cowley is not with us tonight. He's usually over on YouTube, so Phyllis is also doing YouTube, and she's helping um, put the questions up for us. So she's a very busy woman. <laughs> very tonight. busy person. Yeah, yeah, but she's a good multitasker. Yes, she is. All right, announcements. New sweepstakes, and this is one we're really excited about. All right, and announce it. It is the RV rider e-bike rack this thing is worth about six hundred dollars and uh, so if you have e-bikes i know that you have been frustrated in how you carry them we've got actually uh four e-bikes two for each of us two different kinds <laughs> but the one we like the most is our fold up electric bikes and the problem is is while we could fold them up and put them in in our, any of our rvs our fifth wheel or our motorhome, they're usually dirty because we've been out riding them. And I always get a, a not in here, you're going to bring that dirty thing. And so we don't want, I don't want to take the time to have to wash it every time before we go. So we haven't been taking as much as we are. Well, it's because we're hard, it's hard to find a sturdy enough rack. Well, we've got one. It is the RV rider e-bike rack and we're giving one away. Like I said, it's a $600 value. Uh, they sent us one this week. And uh, I spent an afternoon putting it together and putting it on the RV. Jennifer came out and she learned easier how to with do two. it. It's everything's easier. With everything's. Two. And in fact, better. we'll have a video on it next Saturday, and it's an awesome video. And if you're in the market for one and you want to buy one, uh, Hollywood Racks that makes this bike bike rack for e-bikes, uh, they give you a twenty percent discount. There's a special code that you have to enter, and we talk about it. You can go to that link and you'll find it. But anyway, this is a really great rate. Uh, we're going to give one of them away. You do need a two-inch receiver on it uh, to make it make it work. Uh, I do have a picture here of us uh, with our rack. There it is. And you can see that's, that uh, the first one is my bike, and then behind it is Jen's bike, our electric uh, foldable fat tire bikes. And uh, we love these things. It's on the back of our Leisure Travel Vans unit, and uh, it it. It's just a really good sell. I'm very comfortable driving down the road with that uh, that rack on it. So we're really excited about it. And we think that uh, we're going to have a lot of fun with it. So we're giving one away. Uh, just go to the sweepstakes, the address there at the bottom of your screen. You can enter as many times as you want. And uh, we'll announce the winner two weeks from tonight. Again, we'll have a video on um uh, on the YouTube channel on Saturday, showing how we we'll do kind of the unboxing and the assembling. Um, so you can see what that rack is like, but you e-bike riders, um, you can really take, you do need a two inch receiver works on fifth wheels. It works on motor homes. 
works on your tow vehicle. It is not meant for most um, uh, towable trailers because they don't have a sturdy enough rear uh, hitch on the back. Uh, some of them may do it, but you have to check with Hollywood if you're doing it on a towable. But uh, fifth wheels, motorhomes, tow vehicles, this thing is great. So that's uh, that's first thing, our, uh, our uh, RV rider e-bike rack giveaway. The other thing is we have set the dates for our winter camp. All right. The first full weekend in January. So the dates are Thursday, January 5th through Sunday, January 8th. And we're staying at the Lower Falls Hemlock campground. That's where we always stay. At the stay, Falls. Up in Michigan's Upper Peninsula. They clear the spots out for snow. And um, if you are a subscriber to our newsletter, the newsletter that comes out every Monday, mm -hmm. we'll have all the details there if you want to want to be a part of that gathering. Now, it's unlike our other gatherings. This is a kind of a low-keyed one. You make your own reservations at the campground. Mm -hmm. uh, the only fee you pay is the 30 bucks a night that the state DNR charges you. We um, have a potluck dinner on the Thursday night. Then Friday and Saturday, we go to a local restaurants and everybody buys their own. It's just a real low key, but so much fun. Snowshoeing, cross country skiing, hiking, playing in the snow, big bonfires. Um, I know some of you, are, oh, I don't like my friend Jim and Chris Gould, the geeks on tour posted we like to we like to go outside when you have to take your clothes off to go outside. <laughs> in other words, warm weather campers. And that's fine if you're that way. But if you've never camped in the wintertime, you're really missing something. So yeah, we're going to do that again. And if you want information, you should be a subscriber to our newsletter. You'll get all the information on it. And our tomorrow. site is 161. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're on white site 161. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know, I checked a little while ago and, and I just put it up on our Facebook groups. And I think we there's 10 other reservations now from our group there. So it and will like fill Mike up. says, they uh, they plow out spots. And, so and, yep. you don't have to worry about that. And we've never had, if you're curious, if you've never been winter camping, it kind of scares you. Go to rvlifestyle.com. That's our travel blog. Just search under winter camping. You can read. We do this every year. And you can see all the pictures, all the videos and see how much fun it is. So And you do have electric. Yeah. So you can bring a little space heater to save your propane and uh, just turn on the space heater when you're in the unit. And uh, it's fun. Am I wrong in saying that that's probably our favorite it gathering our favorite. of the year? Our it favorite is our favorite camp out it's, of the year. I know it's Bo's favorite. Oh my gosh. Bo <laughs> loves it. All right. Now, this is Ask Us Anything. So enough zip our lips okay. and we'll answer your questions. So thanks. Let's start with one from Bradley Olson. All right. Do you turn your propane off on your LTV in between trips? Not if I'm only going to be between trips for a few days because I don't have anything draining it at all. It really doesn't suck much propane if I have it on and nothing's draining it. Um, it's been in our driveway uh, hooked up to 30 amps for I don't know, a week now, maybe. And since we last used it and um, it, propane is still on, I don't turn it off. What does the manufacturer say? You know, they all have to say, well, you should turn you it turn off it every off. time. But, you know, I it's not an issue uh, for us. It's probably pretty easy to turn off. Yeah, it's a switch. Yeah. You want to add that to your checklist? Yeah. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to have to do it. Thanks, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> Joanne asks with a question. Okay, do you recommend getting a cover for your RV when not in use for several months? Uh, he, sometimes, the, yeah, if you're not going to use it, go for it. Get a good cover, make sure it's breathable. breathable. You know, don't buy a cheap one at Walmart or someplace. You don't want it to stick I on. Mean, a good cover costs hundreds of dollars, so get a good one. Uh, we don't use a cover. We have solar, but then again, we use our RVs every month of the year. So uh, I don't put a cover on it. Uh, I have uh, roofs full of solar panels on both our fifth wheel and on our motor home. And we'll kind of, if the snow gets really thick on them, we'll drive down the highway and get rid of it all. Or we'll just, uh, a couple of times. <laughs> Look I, out if you're behind yeah, us. A couple of times. I'll pull it off if it's really thick, but uh, you know, uh, we just, I don't, I don't use a cover. Uh, but if I was leaving it unattended for a a couple of months, yes, I probably would. Mm -hmm. Yep. I think you would. Yeah, it's that time of year. Everybody's starting to think about winterizing. 
and snow and storage. I don't yeah. know about the other states, but in Michigan, one day it was nice and then it just turned into fall. Now it's supposed to, we're supposed to get frost tonight in Michigan. Yeah. And then it's supposed to be 70 degrees tomorrow. Okay. So you it's going to get warm again. So it's, the seasons don't know what they're doing, but uh, um, we don't, we won't winterize till just before Thanksgiving. Linda Ward. Hi, Linda. Hope you're enjoying. We met Linda. As a I, Hershey. Know. Yep. I know. I yeah. know. Uh, do you ever sleep? You have so many things that you're doing. Podcast, blogs, live chat, video, newsletter, new properties, and new RV. He loves it. He thrives <laughs> on change. The more change, the better, I think. You love change. Is that a compliment? That's a compliment. It's good to be flexible and to like change. It kind of wears me out. but. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it, it kind of wears me out too. We do get tired, but yes, um, today was a nice do nothing day. It, it was a really nice do nothing day. Uh, but we have a pretty good staff. You've all met Phyllis, who uh, works uh, pretty close to full time, and mm -hmm. I, probably more it depends on how you define full time, right, Phyllis? Uh, Chris Cowley, who really helps out and does a great job with video editing. We've got uh, Jerrica, who helps with all of our articles. We've got Wendy, who's uh, very active with uh, with uh, our newsletter and our Facebook. And we've got a awesome group of moderators on uh, social media. So it's, it's very definitely a team effort here. We could not do it without the moderators, without, the, without oh, that help. Yep. It would be impossible because there's just too many people, you know, and our hands on team, uh, it's just uh, amazing. So, but we've grown. So, I mean, like our Facebook group is 140,000 members or, um, uh, just about 170,000 followers on YouTube, uh, 400,000 likes on Facebook. And, you know, it's just in the email. So um, so thank you for yes. supporting us and following us. So we feel we have to work really hard for you because <laughs> you expect a lot <laughs> with all the people helping us. But, but um, we do love doing this. We really do. This is, this is a, a dream come true for us, isn't it? Eric Miller. Uh, Unity Twin Bed owner. We watched your RV a Fridge podcast. How worried are you about what he reported? Uh, good info. But in the end, it is what it is. Well, I'm not worried at all. I haven't changed anything. I mean, if I have my choice to get, you know, if, and he's, he's talking about an interview um, that we had with a mm -hmm. super great guy. In fact, we hope to have him back on the Todd. podcast. Uh, Todd Henson from the RV Training Institute, and we talked about refrigerators, and he explained the different types of refrigerators that RVers use, the most common being a compression uh, or absorption, I'm sorry, an absorption refrigerator, which most RVs have, so we have. The next best is the compression, which he recommends, and then the absolute best, if you have room uh, and the power capabilities, is a um, is a residential type refrigerator. So the only change I would make is um, my fifth wheel, I would get a residential refrigerator if I could find one. Uh, we just haven't had a chance to look for one. If I was ordering and had an opportunity, I would get a compression, uh, compressor uh, ref type refrigerator for the RV. But I have absorptions. I have had in 11 years, 11 years of doing this, we've had no problems with our absorption fridges. The only one we had is a door fell off on the last one we had. And that was just a, you know, a, a little mechanical issue that we've got a new door and it was fine. I think the problems that we had were due to operator error. A lot of operator error. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when we would yeah. lose the entire content of the refrigerator because we didn't do something right. Yeah. you know, but, but we had good reasons why we weren't doing something uh, right. So I, I'm not worried about it at all. I haven't changed anything. And, uh, you know, except I keep saying, hmm, I'd like to get a, uh, we could put a, residential fridge in the uh, our fifth wheel and that may be something we do certainly if we get a new fifth wheel sometime we'll probably upgrade and say we want a residential Are you hearing this time. folks <laughs> yeah uh chad gordy hi chad uh just uh got out the new fifth wheel full-time living what pointers would you give us starting out start slow really slow don't take a huge trip right off the bat. Uh, stay close to wherever you're going to be based out of, even though you're full time in an area that you're familiar with, not too far from your dealer. Stay in touch with your dealer so you can ask a lot of questions. Don't uh, pack more than you need. And that you'll, you'll learn 
over the first month, uh, you did for sure. We all do. Stay a while when you go someplace. Stay there. Don't yeah. every day take off unless you know that's what really makes you happy. And get out those manuals and read them and reread them and reread them, and get on the University of Google and uh, YouTube, the University of YouTube, and uh, watch as many videos on uh, you know from hooking up to leveling. But uh, just go slow. You can't learn it all at once. And don't be intimidated, but don't be afraid to ask questions either. So uh, so maybe it is a good idea to move every day. Then you'll get real familiar with unhooking yeah. and hooking. <laughs> just joking. You know, I, we've had ours for, do you guys, we've had our fifth wheel for six months now. Wow. And uh, I'm pretty comfortable now with driving it. In fact, probably too comfortable. I got to keep reminding myself I'm pulling it. And um, I'm very comfortable with... Uh, uh, hooking it up, uh, unhooking is just as, is even easier. Um, I've learned the intricacies of leveling and the bottom line I've learned on that is read the instructions. Don't listen to other people, read the instructions. And, um, if I do all that, it, it works good. Uh, but you know, it, it, everything has a light, slight learning curve. Just take your time with it, but read those manuals over and over again. Good question, Chad, and enjoy that, uh, that new fifth wheel. Nancy Jenkins from up in Canada. How is your other home in Florida after the hurricane? We are very, very fortunate. We are in the panhandle and everything is fine. And in fact, our son and his wife are celebrating her birthday. For the, they went down for the weekend and it was kind of iffy whether they were going to go or not. But uh, great. We are very grateful that uh, everything is just fine, except there's a bunch of... Uh, those little yeah, that's interesting. There's a, a bunch of jellyfish that have washed up uh, in the last two days, and they're actually they were kicked up uh, from uh, Hurricane Ian deep in the Gulf, and they've made their way now to the northern pan, the northern shore at the Panhandle, and they're uh, uh, they're big pink jellyfish, and they're actually twelve they, inches. They're that big. They're about that big. Yeah, they're they're uh, they're called pink meanies. Meanies, like mean, mean? yeah, like, okay. And they're a new species of jellyfish that has just been discovered in the Gulf of Mexico. They're kind of um, of the same family of a Mediterranean version, but these are unique to the Gulf, and uh, they are usually way out there. They have like fifty foot tentacles. That's creepy. They and they feed on other jellyfish, so they drop these tentacles, the other jellyfish swim into them, and then they grab them and they bring those tentacles up and eat. I mean, I'm giving you more details than you want, but. Look out for the meanies. Uh, so they had the purple flags, which is usually sharks, stingrays, or jellyfish in short in close waters. So uh, the pink meanies, <laughs> they've been out, they've been there. But I think they're there's they've dissipated probably today now. But um, but poor Florida, yeah, got oh hit my hard. Gosh, we have uh, and we have we'll have a story in the newsletter tomorrow. But so here's the thing about Florida. I mean. So many RVers, thousands and thousands, winter in Florida. Um, and you've seen the devastated for all the people who live there. I mean, I, my, our hearts go out to them. And uh, that's the first concern. Is the, and there's still people missing, many people missing or unaccounted for. But um, rebuilding is going to be, you know, we've seen the results of all the previous hurricanes over the last decade. And we can tell you this one is is going to be even it's going to take a long time to restore some of those areas. The RV parks, uh, since this is all about RVing, the RV parks, and again, RVs are not the main priority here. Please don't get that. But RV parks uh, have been decimated. And um, we've seen a lot of pictures. We've not seen a full report, but there's going to be a lot of snowbirds who don't have a place to go this year. Uh, they're gone. Uh, and it's going to be a long time before they're restored. Our daughter-in-law told us of a, a couple that they know who have a, an RV, a, an RV a, in Florida, a, a fixed place there, and it was distinctive. He had added, he had added a, a big, a big gator on the side on of his, the side of his. Yeah, and they were watching the news, and they looked, and there went their floating away. Yeah, they recognized their gator. Yeah, and it but, was you uh, know they that's not their main home, so yeah. that is the good part. And again, you know, uh, compared to the loss of life, the destruction of property, the fact that people might not be able to get away for the winter is, is certainly low on the priority of everything in Florida. But um, 
for many of our viewers and you know who had planned to go to Florida. Um, I don't know it, how it's this is going to be very challenging you. for you. Yeah, I always is. wonder what do you do with all that the debris. Dark, the, well, we've seen it. You know, in many places it takes Hurricane Michael. They're still cleaning up Hurricane Michael up yeah. down by Mexico Beach. Yeah. Uh, late bloom hiker. Thanksgiving and first week of December, it can get below freezing while we travel. Do we have to clear the pipes and put in antifreeze while we travel? Well, it, it depends on where you go into and whether it's freezing all day long for hours and hours on end. Uh, normally, no, um, I don't. But what I when it gets really cold, I make sure I have no water in my freshwater tank and I empty the water, I, you know, I run my, um, my water pump and clear out as much as I can any water in the plumbing system. Uh, and then I'm not too worried about anything freezing. Uh, in our um, fifth wheel, the pipes are above uh, or just underneath the floor. There's a little area that they've got, a little space like that, that the pipes run. So that's going to be pretty good for, the, for that. But when it gets what I have told people for 11 years and I've been pretty right when it gets uh, 28 degrees for prolonged periods of time, enough to freeze ice in a puddle, in a you know, not just, you know, a skim ice, but to freeze ice in a puddle, you better make sure you, you have winter ice at that point. Uh, but if you're just traveling and the temperature in the daytime is up and then you get down and it gets cool at night and then it warms up again, you, you've got some grace there. I just wouldn't put a lot of water in the in the pipes. Uh, I would uh, I'd hook up, you know, when you get to a campground or something. Uh, but just be just be smart about it. And it, it, and if worse comes to worse, winterize, and then you just bring your own water with you, your own uh, drinking water and hygiene water. That's how we camp in the wintertime. Everybody's pretty much winterized. They run antifreeze through their plumbing mm -hmm. system, and uh, you know you can use the toilet. You flush the toilet, whatever you. With put in the toilet, you put antifreeze in. Uh, that's how we camp in the winter, and it works works great. But but make sure you put that pink stuff, that RV antifreeze in. Always RV. Don't put regular antifreeze, but RV marine grade is the only kind you can use in an RV. Sandy B. What causes a fifth wheel to become unlevel when it hasn't been moved for five months and has hydraulics and a uh, lot is level? Um, the, the, the jacks are kind of just like they're losing a little bit of uh, fluid maybe or what, or the pressure changes for months. Uh, I always think it's a good idea to go in and re-level, you know, uh, if you're going to leave your thing there. Ours has been sitting in Tennessee now for a couple of months and we will go back and I will probably, when I, we're going back on the a week from Saturday and a week from next Saturday. And I will probably re-level ours at that point because it's just been sitting there. But mm -hmm. the hydraulics will shift a little bit. Sometimes you'll hear it. You bet you might be in that and you might hear go, Ink, king, and you might even move a little or you'll just hear it cluck. And that's yeah. just, it, it, it's fairly normal that that happens. So, and Marianne Bostain. If you are traveling and find yourself in a terrible storm with wind and rain and hail, what do you do if there are no buildings around? Um, get off the highway, find a hotel or a school or a church. They all have parking lots, big parking lots, and get on the leeward side of that terrible wind. Uh, I'm not so worried about rain. Hail, there's not much you can do, except Hail Mary, maybe. But, but get uh, out of yeah, the area. Uh, but you know, we've actually watched weather forecasts when we've driven through like Tornado Alley out uh, in the in the plains, and we saw that there was possibly a lot of hail coming. And we've gotten up and left wherever we were staying a little bit early and beat Got that out storm. Of there. Um, so gotta pay attention a, to the weather. The word you use, terrible storm, get out of there. But if you're caught in it, get off the main highways, find a church, a school, a hotel and park as close as you can to the leeward side of that building. Um, and then- Does everybody know what leeward means? Yes. Okay. If they don't, they can Google it. Okay. You know, uh, so that's good. Uh, Teresa Schumacher. 
Okay, have a Class A motorhome with propane tanks in the side. Think it is 16.2 pound tank. How long will furnace run when it's full? I'm afraid to use it, but we'll be camping in cold weather and uh, space heaters won't uh, be as good keeping lines from freezing. What depends on how long you're going to be camping. I would think your propane tanks are a little bigger than 16. Most Class A's, unless it's a very short Class A, most are like 20 pounds, I think, minimum. But um, you should be able to run the heater for a, a week, two weeks, three weeks. Two weeks, I would think, would be the max if you're running it all the time and you're running it hot. But um, uh, you can run it a long time. I mean, we will, um, on our Class Cs, I think we have a, uh, we might, the Class C might be a 16 pound tank, but I'll fill it up. Uh, I always start the season with it filled up. Uh, sometimes I fill it up just before we do our winter camp out where we run it, you know, literally it's 24 seven for four or five days in a row. And I, I still have half to three quarters of a tank of propane left. So it'll last a long time. If you're just traveling someplace in and out, going through cold weather, if you're not staying in cold weather for several weeks, a couple of weeks at least, you should be just fine with that full tank, but monitor it and see how your use is. Uh, I don't know what else you use, probably your refrigerator. That's good. Bob Leach. Will you winterize the Arcadia at the woodlands? Um, probably. That's my thought right now. The beauty of the woodlands is my next door neighbor on the other side of the holler is a RV tech, Brad. And our neighbor and friends, uh, Brad and Mary, like we're going to have to have Brad and Mary come out and meet our group. We've got our camp out, our gathering starting there in just two weeks, a little over two weeks from tonight. In fact, two weeks from tonight, we'll be there. We'll be doing our live, uh, this program from the Woodlands. Mm -hmm. um, but we're going to invite them to come and meet all of the other RVers. But since Brad's right there, I think I'll send him over and before we bring it home around Thanksgiving. Oh, definitely before we bring it home. And have him, <laughs> bringing have it back to Michigan, it's got to get winterized. And even if we left it in Tennessee, it would, yeah, I believe, have to be winterized. Yeah, it, it gets it gets very cold. And there is, you know, in Tennessee, not like in Michigan, but it does get cold enough that you'd want it winterized. We're bringing it back because, as I said, the very top, and we haven't told you much at all about any of this, and we will as soon as it's final, because I... I, I have this tendency, I get all excited about something and I say, so, well, this is what we're going to do. And then things change. And then I feel like a jerk because I told you, but we're this close to say, to being able to say about 10 acres of land that we hope to close on very soon in Michigan. And we're also moving into a new house as well. So uh, for our six and bricks home um, in Southwest Michigan, it's not in a development or anything. So don't, don't say, well, where can we get some? Cause it's, it's different. It's different. You got to find your own individual lots in Michigan, but we're pretty excited. So I'll tell you all about that when it's for sure, 100%. Inca Schultz. Uh, do you get your RV detailed? And if yes, who do you use? Well, we're traveling all the time. So um, once we used a kid and we were down in Florida who set up the beach chairs, he had a side business oh, yeah. detailing. And our grandson used to detail. He was... Uh, did that on the side when we're at an rv show like uh tampa mm -hmm. or where's the we did it and we used to go to fmca rallies yeah i think it was an fmca rally we had it detailed and boy that was there was a crew was about great. six guys came through and they just did a beautiful job um one time we had it uh we didn't have a detail we had it waxed and washed in the parking lot of our condo by a mobile tech company no, it wasn't a mobile tech company. Yeah, it was the beach guy that. It was the beach yeah, guy. Yeah, the beach guy. That. Yeah. So this, wherever you go, there's somebody. Just ask the the nearest RV park, who who does detailing, and they'll tell you who to use. And also places that do RV repairs sometimes offer yeah. the detailing. Yep. So. It can get pretty pricey. Yeah, it is. It's a couple hundred bucks minimum. So, Laurel Gurley. I will be interested to see how you secure your e-bikes to the new rack. Looking forward to YouTube on the new rack. Yeah, that, they secure so well. Uh, Laurel Song, if you just tuned in. Especially we, when you read the manual. You had to say that. <laughs> yeah, it helps when you read the manual. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> you just don't go with your instincts. Yeah. 
been there, done that. Uh, but um, so the thing is that uh, this thing is so secure. It comes with uh, each part of the bike where they secure onto the rack has a lock, a keyed lock. It's all keyed the same. Then it has a cable with the, the key. Then it has two ratchet straps. I mean, it is so secure. Uh, so um, I don't know if we, we, I don't do all those. I mean, I, we talk about them, but I'm not going to burn tape showing you how you wrap a strap around a bike, but they do a great, a good job. Mr. Joe. Is it acceptable to have two RV power cords hooked together? We have a 40 foot cord, need a 12 foot, 12 foot more to reach the power supply. This is for a, a long term seasonal site setup. Well, it's always better mm -hmm. not to, but yes, it is acceptable. Um, just make sure that you have heavy enough cores. Um, many times we have camped where, uh, you know, I think we have a couple of 25 foot uh, cords and I've had to hook them together to get to the pedestal and that's fine. But the longer it is, the more uh, it, it loses its effectiveness or the voltage or the amperage or somebody's going to correct me and all that, but it's seems better like, to have one cord. Yeah, rather it seems than two. Like they but, should, a long time I'd go get a cord, but yeah, uh, if you can get a longer one, but you need 52 feet, that's kind of an awkward, awkward one. Now my 30 amp connection at my sticks and bricks house is really on a hundred foot cord cost a fortune by the way, but that works fine. And we have more than enough amperage, you know, and uh, to, to keep everything running. In it. But yes, you can hook them up. Um, and you're not going to be using it a lot when it's in storage either. So you have, you'll have plenty of power. Susan Wilson. Trying to figure out if I'm cut out for RVing. I would absolutely lose my mind if a huge RV pulled in next to me with a big TV on the side and noise late at night. Does this happen often? It can happen. And but usually, happens. usually you have to be quiet at a certain time. Yes, usually there's a quiet hour. But Susan, if that would cause you to lose your mind, yeah, you, then you're I, not I'm with Susan. It. Susan, you go out there, you want peace and quiet, you want nature sounds and the big TV on the side. I mean, that kind of goes with life, you know. We don't like campgrounds for that very reason, Susan. <laughs> so see, we're, Susan, we're boondockers. Yeah, and we don't watch if, TV very, very little. If you're just starting off, you're going to be on campgrounds and you will see that um, these great big RVs, I don't know why people decide that they're going to go camping and get away from it all and have to blare their TVs, but they do. Even the Leisure. They've got a Yeah, Leisure just TV. came out with the second one on the other. Why do you need to have a TV on the outside? Because a lot of people obviously like their television. I can see it for tailgating, you know, at a football game or something like that. But uh, but I, you know, I can always, honestly say, though, in a campground, we've never had anybody keep us awake with the TV at night. They, people are usually pretty good about, you know, quiet hours. And like a KOA, I, I, in a lot of campgrounds, they'll kick you out if yeah. you're noisy. They'll yeah. ask so you I would, to leave. I wouldn't about the noise, but you will see big mm -hmm. RVs that'll pull in next to you. And they do have those outdoor TVs and yeah. outdoor kitchens. And, you know, um, you're People. sure in the same set, they have just as much right to it as you do. But if, you, if you're like us and you, that's not your style of camping, boondocking is, is the way to go. Yeah. But first, get into it. Why don't you rent an RV for a couple of weeks? And try it and see if you like it because you might not it might not be for you or you might say wow this is awesome so uh, well, we carry a fan that we turn on to make some noise inside our rv or we'll put the uh, ceiling fan on to uh, make a little noise some white noise so lots of times if you live in an apartment or a condo or there's lots of neighbors you know it's just like it's life you know we're all out there trying to coexist yeah Put some white noise on. Nancy again. What do you know about uh, Jayco towables with no slide outs? My van can tow 3,000 or less. Uh, what do I have to uh, look for the for the good and the bad? The only thing is the step in and out uh, need a third step for me. Well, that's easy to fix. You just get a little step. We had one of those once for one mm -hmm. of our IV, RVs. Well, yeah. It just bothered me, the height of it. I don't know why, but it did. You can something that's portable that you carry around with you that uh, 
third step if you need it? You know, if your van can tow 3,000 or less, you're not going to tow much of a trailer. It's going to be really, really small. And 3,000 means if the trailer weighs 3,000 pounds, that doesn't mean you can tow it because by the time you put things in it, uh, it's going to weigh more than that. And so you need something that weighs, you know, more like 2,000 pounds. And I don't know of any Jayco towable, maybe some of those little uh, teardrops. Those, those small teardrop things that you could tow, but uh, 3,000 pounds is not very much of a trailer. Just remember how much this is, what you're going to be towing weighs, and then you have to figure out how much you're going to be bringing with you. Yeah. And, and that's usually, uh, uh, usually we tell people to figure another thousand pounds. So that trailer should be probably 2000 pounds by the time you put in the stuff that you're going to carry in it. You're going to be loading up your back seat to your and, car. And it's going to stress your van out. Van's not meant to tow, you know, a big, a, a relatively good size RV. Facebook user. Do you have any recommendations for foldable solar panels? I have an A-frame and looking into them for boondocking. Or in the month of October, is it called boo-docking? Boo-docking. Yeah. We just were at an RV park today. To mm -hmm. for, how about this? When we're, when we're not camping ourselves, we take Bo for a walk in at an, an RV, RV park. park. Gosh, I guess we like RV. Uh, in fact, they have the boo bash. Next weekend and the weekend after. Yeah, two weekends. And uh, then we've got close. an interview on the podcast this weekend, by the way, about uh, Halloween camping and how popular it is. Make sure you catch that. But uh, foldable solar panels, um, ZAMP makes a whole bunch of them. Z-A-M-P, check them out. Um, it's uh, I have some foldable panels that I use with uh, my Jackery power supply. And another story we're working on, I just got this awesome radio system from Midland. It's a kind of a battery powered two-way radio system. It has a 60 watt foldable solar panel that'll charge those batteries in about four hours. So there's lots of them out there. I don't know what you're going to be charging. I think an A-frame, I don't know what an A-frame is. I think it's a small, those small little pop-up type campers. So yeah, you could get some solar panels, a couple of a couple hundred watts of that, and that will help you with your batteries. Um, there's a bunch of them. See what Zamp has, Z A M P. They're they're a pretty good manufacturer. RV home with the question. If there is an island in the fifth wheel, make sure it doesn't block the residential fridge. Uh, there uh, been there, not a good outcome. Okay, that's interesting. I don't know what. If there like, is an island, make sure it doesn't to open block it? the or cut the maybe, air flow. I don't know what's why. What she's maybe you know. I don't know. I don't know what. Not enough info. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Whatever that means, Johnny Lightning. Late again? Yes, <laughs> I'll be late for my own funeral. That's a good thing to be, Johnny. <laughs> late, late for your, for your own funeral. funeral. Yeah. <laughs> you Glad, you're Glad you're with us. Glad you're with us. All right, um, Anne Marie. Yefco. I'm looking for insurance for C-Class. What insurances are out there? I live in northeastern Pennsylvania. You want to do a, um, a look for, I can't remember. I think it's on our, I think it's on our partner page. If you go to our partner page, we've got uh, an insurance company that we recommend that will, you can just tell them what you're looking for and it will shop it around and give you the best rates. And that's always what we recommend and on it. Get multiple quotes for what kind of insurance you want. And uh, just go to our rvlifestyle.com slash partners. And you can scroll down and you can find uh, the insurance company that we, we recommend. So Facebook user. We have a heck of a time when checking out motorhome tire pressure. Well, they have the, v, the Via Air uh, compressor that we have. Okay, so they that's a that good one. For the proper pressure. Uh, or close to it. Tires are cold. When we turn on the engine and proceed to drive, the TPMS. The tire pressure monitoring system. Always shows much less pressure. Once the tires warm up, the tire pressure monitoring system uh, shows better reading, but never like the uh, Vi Air. Have you had this experience? 
Which one would you believe? Uh, I always go with what my TPMS says, but um, I've gotten actually pretty good. The, the VA, it takes forever to get it up there. But what you want to do is cold pressure, which means that the tire hasn't been run. Get the pressure to read that. Uh, I always will turn my ignition on and then leave it with the TPMS showing. And then I will fill it up and I have it set on the via air and the, you know, I look to watch the little pressure gauge it has and it'll get to where I think it's there. And it's usually off a little bit from what the TPMS says, but then I try to get my TPMS to read cold, the pressure setting that they recommend. And um, yes, it will change. It will go as it, as it warms up, the pressure will increase. Uh, that's fine. That's perfectly acceptable. You want whatever they suggest on that little sticker on the door, whatever you suggest, they suggest is the cold pressure reading. That's what you want. And try to adjust the via air as you pull it in. It means you got to let it run for a, mi a minute or two, and then you go look to see what it is. Then you go back. But um, that's how I do it. And uh, I always trust the TPMS system more than I trust the, uh, the little gauge on the via air. Ann Turner. Uh, we're camping at Bayview Campgrounds in Whitefish Bay. Top three things to see or do while we're there this week. Oh, you had to rub it in, Ann, that you're up there and we're not yet, but we still might be. Okay, you're at Whitefish Bay. First thing you're going to do is go to the Great Lakes Shipwreck Museum. Uh, it's right at the end of the road that you're on there at Bayview Campground and go right there to uh, the, uh, the museum. It's a fabulous museum. Uh, and then go over the dunes and walk the stone strewn beach, windswept beaches of Lake Superior. It's just a beautiful. Area. We love it. We go every winter and walk that. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing. Then come back into uh, take the road. The, there's only one road out there. Take that road into Paradise and then uh, uh, turn uh, to the south to Tequamanon Falls, 15 miles down the road, and spend a day at Tequamanon Falls. Fabulous color right now. You'll really enjoy it. That's where we're doing our winter camp out in January. Good luck getting a uh, parking spot yep. with fall color. And then uh, I would come back to Paradise and that road that follows the Superior Shoreline, uh, which is... Michigan Highway 123, <laughs> follow that back east uh, along the, the highway. It's a nice, nice drive and you'll see uh, lighthouses and you can go as far as, as, as Sault Ste. Marie. And then I would urge you to look at the, um, at the, at the canal, the, um, it was not the canal, the locks, the, the locks. Sioux locks. It's fun to watch the freighters. And then come back to Whitefish Bay. So there's three things. If you don't like that, you could come back, go into Newberry, pick up Michigan Highway 28 and take that to the pictured rocks. Uh, best thing you should do, Ann, is have our guide, our RV lifestyle travel guide to the Upper Peninsula. Can't believe you don't have that. It would tell you exactly <laughs> where to go, what to see, where to do all over the UP. Um, so think about that. Pick up our uh, RV lifestyle travel guide and have a great time up there. Plumdry. How are you liking the satellite dish service? Uh, I'm glad I have it, but it has not been, you know, east of the Mississippi, it does not work nearly as well as it does west of the Mississippi because there are so many users east of the Mississippi. Um, and also our camping style tends to have us in the woods East of the Mississippi, most of the campgrounds are pretty open. They don't have a, or they're pretty uh, wooded. They don't have a clear, unobstructed view to the north sky, which is what Starlink really wants. When I have that, it's it's very reliable, but uh, there's a lot of congestion. And just like on cellular, the more people that are using Starlink, the slower speeds become. I have found it unusable to do our live streams because the upload speeds are abysmal. Cellular is much better. And I have found that cellular is often faster download than I'm getting. Now there are people, crazy Starlink uh, evangelists who are defending it to the end. And it's great. It's a wonderful system, but it hasn't been fully built out yet. And 
east of the Mississippi, uh, I have found it to be more disappointing uh, and less effective than usually my cell phone, my uh, um, MiFi charger or my, uh, uh, I have a dual PepWave router that works on T-Mobile and Verizon. And usually that even does a better job. So, but that's my experience. West of the Mississippi, it's pretty good. Marion Demert. Odd R ordered wonder Ford has uh, included a, a tire pressure monitoring system for all six tires. Mercedes Sprinter does not have this feature. Will you be installing a tire pressure monitoring system on your Sprinter? I absolutely will. In fact, it's sitting in a box in Tennessee in our fifth wheel, which we were going to put now on the Sprinter. And that was a disappointment with the Sprinter. We love the Sprinter, but, uh, um, Unlike the the Wonder, which uh, on the Ford Transit chassis does have a built-in TPMS, uh, I didn't have one. I don't have one on my Sprinter, so um, we will put that in. I had thought I brought that box home with me, but I didn't. So when we were down there in a couple of weeks, we're going to actually have two, both of our RVs on our site. And uh, part of our team is going to stay in one of them, and then we'll stay in the other on our, in our property there. Uh, I can... Uh, Call my neighbor Brad and have him help me put on that TPMS system. It's actually, it's just pretty simple. You screw them onto the stems of the tires. But So, yes, I am installing one. A Facebook user. Should we use covers for uh, Minnesota winters? Yes. If you're going to leave it there and not use it for a couple, three months on end, put a cover on it. We talked about that earlier in the program. Make sure it's a breathable cover. So it's all there. All right, just a couple of time for just a couple more questions. A uh, oh, couple of more announcements. We got to remind you again, we're giving away, for those of you who have an e-bike, this is the rack you need to carry. If you have a fifth wheel, if you have a motorhome, if you have a tow vehicle, uh, the RV rider e-bike rack, 600 buck value. We're giving one away. We'll announce the winner two weeks from tonight. Uh, just go here and you can enter as many times you want. It's free to enter. Um, learn about this RV rider. We just got one. We put it on this week. Uh, we'll have a video next Saturday for you to see and how it, how you put it together, how awesome it is. It holds two e-bikes that weigh as much as 80 pounds. We're really excited about it. So enter that. If you, uh, if you're looking for it, it's called the RV rider. It is the most stable, secure, uh, system I have seen yet to carry an e-bike. So even, even our folding ones, which I'll transport, you know, uh, unfolded and ready to go. And then um, summer, it's uh, fall, time to get hooked up with your sweatshirts and your cold weather gear and long t-shirts. Check out our shop. That's also where you can find all of our travel guides. We just talked about our Upper Peninsula travel guide. If you go there, you'll find them there. We urge you to do all of that and more. Lots coming this week. Uh, talk about Halloween fall camping coming up on Saturday or on our, our Wednesday podcast. And again, our e-bike uh, rack uh, video will be next Saturday. Two weeks from now, we will be in uh, Tennessee. We'll come to you live from Tennessee. We're looking forward to that mm -hmm. with our gathering. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun in mid-Tennessee. And then um, just don't forget, if you are a subscriber to our newsletter that comes out every Monday, Details on our winter camp out, which we just announced the first weekend of January in the snow in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Uh, find that in the newsletter. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm all tired now. <laughs> That's a lot of announcements. That is think? a lot of talking. Yeah. Uh, thank you guys so much for being there. Thank you, Phyllis, for uh, doing all that double duty uh, today. And uh, we thank you guys for being there. We hope you have a great week. Again, our hearts, our prayers, our uh, thoughts with uh, all those in Florida that had suffered such devastation. Uh, we'll have a story on it in the newsletter tomorrow. Be safe out there, and uh, we'll see you down the road. Happy trails. Happy trails.